We're going to be going over finding key levels and how to identify them properly. Let's get straight into it. So I made a video a few months back on how to find key levels and identify them and stuff like that. But one common thing I found from people and heard from people was they're having a hard time you know, really picking out key levels. So then I took a step back and tried to figure out the easiest way I can explain how to find key levels. You know, there's no secret size, no secret indicator to find them. Just look at what stands out to you the most on that chart. Everyone might see charts a bit differently, but when you see an extreme high and extreme low, all time high, all time lows, 52 week lows, stuff like that. They're going to stand out to you on the chart, especially when you're looking at the wick on the candle. The wick to me is the most important part of a candle. So as long as you can focus on that, I think it will make finding key levels much more easier and will speed up the process it takes. Now, of course, the more you do this, the easier it will get. If you guys want to practice this more, I'll show you an example on how to do this in thinkorswim. And then the more you do it, the faster you'll get and the quicker you'll identify them. So without further ado, I just jump over to thinkorswim. I'll break down some examples. So right now we're looking at Microsoft on the weekly time frame. Of course, like I mentioned, you want to start out on the higher time frames. Uh, Microsoft typically goes straight up, so you don't have to really worry about the monthly time frame. But on some different equities and some different stocks, you have to start from higher time frames to find different key levels. Just starting out, my look at like I mentioned in the introduction, what am I looking for on my identifying key levels? I'm looking for areas that just stand out to me. Now looking at this chart, this big green candle right here. Putting a kilo over here doesn't really stand out to me. There's nothing that really jumps at me or anything, if that makes sense. But then when you start seeing these, you can see you have a low right here. You pushed up, found some resistance up here. I'd mark that one out. You come back down to 237. Low, you found the low right there. You found some buyers. And then I just like to identify them like that. So just already, just by doing this from the weekly time frame, you can see we found some key levels here just in a couple of seconds. So we can see we found this key level here at 246 on Microsoft. It was the highs from February 2021. You can see we found some support right here, support right here. Then we flip this level back into resistance, resistance, resistance. And then going back into the past three weeks of February, March, we turned this 246.57 level back into support just off glancing at this chart in a couple of seconds. So now moving on forward, now we can identify some more key levels and find some more areas we could look to take a trade on Microsoft. So moving it up, doing the same process, looking for areas that stand out to me. Of course, everybody views charts differently, but I'm just doing what you know works best for me. And I'm identifying stuff that I've been doing the past you know couple of years and what I have found easiest to me. So again, a little high at 306. You can mark it all time highs, of course, stands out to me. January lows last year, mark those ones out all these levels in this region. That looks pretty good to me on the weekly time frame. Again, as you start adding more lines, it gets more cluttered. If you look right now on the weekly time frame, you'll see you have a bunch of lines, but really when you're trading intraday, these these levels are all about, you know, five to $10 apart. So really you're only gonna see, you know, maybe two to three of these lines in your chart at one time. So yes, on higher time frames, it may look cluttered, but on the five minute, 15 minute, 30 minute, you're really not gonna be seeing too many lines and it should be pretty straightforward. And then we start zooming into the daily time frames, you can see more levels start to pop out. So this level we had marked out at 290, you can see it kind of goes all the way back here actually. So, so uh, resistance, support, resistance, 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 support. So 290 is definitely a big level here. And then we also, this level kind of in this region, you can see lows around 281 or two, we had these lows from 283. You can mark these ones out pretty briefly from the daily time frame. So 283, you can see support, kind of support in this region. We turn this level back into resistance right here in August. And now you can see exactly where we found resistance on this past Friday, March 17th. We found resistance around 283.96. So now let's jump down to the lower time frames, like the five minute or 15 minutes, see how this looks. So now just jumping into the 15 minute time frame. I have extended our zone, but I don't really keep track of them just to make the viewing a bit easier. So going down to March 13th, we can see we came down to 246, found some support off that level we just marked down the daily time frame. We rallied right into 263, found some resistance. And then this level, again, we just marked down the daily time frame, resistance right here, the day prior. Then on this day, March 16th, we perfectly bounced off that level at 263. You rallied straight into that level we marked out at 275. You could have taken this trade you know, bought calls down here at 263, right up to the, you know, 271, 275, about a $12 move on Microsoft, pretty solid trade there, just based off daily kilos we just found literally five seconds ago. Then going into Friday, March 17th, if we can see, came up around the 283, the kilo we marked out, found some resistance off it. You pull back right into 275, also highs from the day prior, found some support off that level, bounced right back into 281.44. Found some resistance and then you kind of just chopped in the range. So you can see just based on the daily and weekly levels we found, this 
in the past two minutes of watching this video, you can see how well these levels are respected on big equ equities like Microsoft. And then I'll show you a quick example on Meta. And then you guys can start doing this on your own. I'll show you a quick way to do this on uh, Thinkorswim or Transpire, for example. So looking at Meta on the weekly time frame, Meta IPO'd, or Facebook, whatever you want to call it, IPO'd around uh, 2012. And it's kind of been trailing up higher. So Meta clearly has been hit in the past year and a half, two years. So Meta's came all the way back down to levels from around 2015. In order to find key levels, when the stock is just being down, you have to start zooming out to, you know, five, 10 years plus to find key levels. So looking at Meta, of course, Meta's pretty beaten up. People are scared to buy the stock down here. I was one of them. I did have this level on my chart and it would have been a great long opportunity. You can see we had some levels down here you could have marked out. So of course, we had this little high right here on the weekly time frame. You can see it was resistance right here. Turn this level back into support in 2015 comp support right here in 2016. Then exactly where you bounced here on Meta in October after earnings, it came down around 86.53, found some support at this level, and that was about a move about 100% back to the upside. So a few more lows we can mark out, just doing pretty briefly here. Uh, you had 133, you had lows around here at 113. Of course, you had these highs up here around 196, these highs up here at 218. Then of course you can get, you know, Start doing it a bit more quickly once you get the hang of it. You're gonna see 175 we just had marked out and you'll see that level stand out here in a couple seconds. And then of course, as you go higher, I mean, there's no reason to really mark out kilos around 297 until you really get back there. I mean, Meta's trading at 195. Yeah, you could mark out all these levels, but when it gets there, I'll find key levels, but until then, no point to really you know, do too much. Try to focus on near-term price action. So again, um, you would wanna go down to the daily time frame. Because Meta's still being down, you have to zoom out to like the, the five-year daily. But at this point, just doing this on Meta pretty pretty briefly, I think it shows you just how well these levels are respected. So then, zooming into the daily time frame, just looking at the past year and a half of price action, the 175 level we had marked out, you can see support, support right here. So pretty big level. And then the 196 level we had marked out, you can see kind of chopped around it for quite some time. Two big wicks off this level, off of earnings in February came exactly to 196.31. You broke over it, support, bounced up higher to 205. Now you're pulling back. So flipping down to an intraday time frame on Meadow, you'll see just, again, how well these levels are respected that we just found off the weekly time frame. So you can see, we opened up around here on March 13th. We came down to 175.65, instant bounce off 175.60, move up higher. I mean, you moved up about $8 pretty decent trade. You came right into 196. Look what happened here on March 15th, came into the 196, used that level as resistance, pulled back. And then the following day, the same level we found from the weekly time frame, not only was it a daily level we found on the higher time frame, it was also the prior day's high, prior day resistance. And we opened up here on March 16th, pulled back into this level, instant bounce off 196.31, and then you moved up about you know $10 a meta. So if you had this key level on your chart from the weekly time frame, it was a pretty solid trade you could have taken. And I mean, and this is why it's important to identify levels on higher time frames because you can see just how well they're respected. And then when you see these levels in your chart, you're gonna know they're from higher time frames and they're to be respected and how influential they are on intraday time frames. Right now we're looking at the watch this feature from the little sidebar. You can just open it just like that. If you guys wanna just get some practice and chart and find different charts to look at, just try them out pretty briefly. Just come over here, come down to public. And of course you can use like the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones 30. I use the NASDAQ for this example, and we'll just show you the whole, all the all the companies listed in the NASDAQ, or all the companies part of the NASDAQ 100, you know, or the S&P 500, for example. Let's just find a random stock, for example. So like ALGN, I think it's like a line technology or something like that. So just a random stock we found. I usually don't look at this, but we'll see if we can find some lows pretty briefly. So again, just doing the same process over and over in real time. You wanna start from the higher time frames, the weekly time frame or the monthly time frame. Again, what stands out to me, these wicks down here stand out to me. I'll well, mark out those lows down here around 234. I'll well, mark out these highs, they stand out to me. These lows stand out to me, these lows. Let's just zoom into the one day time frame and see how well these lows are respected. So we can see just based off the key lows we just had, we just found, we came down, we got, you found some support off 234, bounced that support, you know, made a new high right here. Again, you pulled back to 234, found some support. And then you broke down to 178. If you had this level mark in your chart, you could have got, gone long at this level, um, wrote it back into 234, 251. You shot up on earnings probably, came into 373, pulled back, ran the highs that we had marked out from August 8th. You can see resistance, support, 
support just based off finding these key levels in about you know 60 seconds of work so just by doing that over time of course i've been doing this for quite some time so i'm able to find them a bit quicker but if you want to get some practice just open up the nasdaq 100 or the s p 500 just go through charts on the weekly time frame and just identify them and see how well they're respected on lower time frames like the daily the four hour the one hour just do that over and over for a couple hours a day and maybe like 30 minutes a day just get some practice in and then before you know it you should be able to find these levels pretty quickly and then you'll see how well they're respected. Now, I can't say this works for small mid cap names. Small mid caps are pretty sporadic. They kind of move on their own. But for proven companies, net companies in the NASDAQ 100, companies in S&P 500, companies with a larger market cap, you'll typically find that they're pretty, that these daily and weekly levels are pretty well respected. And they're always presenting trade opportunities based off these key levels. So if this video helped you, if you're anything, just drop a like and comment below and stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching.